Son of a Fisher King, one, primogenitor. The moon in memory is always full, yet unseen. An offstage hint, a dove nesting on the catwalk, a curtain of light pulled to the floor by the silver glints of glass. Full, the moon becomes an explanation, a correlation to werewolves sprouting hair and fang, dual-natured men who fear and devour, bloody men clipped by a scythe of moon, blood running across their vast pale plains of chest and cheek. The moon at its fullest beginning to die again expiates reasonable men in an unreasonable world. Bloody, bloody men in silence. The moon in memory is always full and methinks I see my father, that gaunt ghost of unbeing, that farmer king of Elliot's frozen acreage. My father, sloughed under the door's broken pane, his cigarette glowing like a cat's angry eye. Yet this is no Gethsemane cave, and the three maidens slumber on. The castle nestled in the dark forest of marriage, tangled and entombed by the silent horrid night, hell's own child, silent at its center, the wheel and the tree and the thorny crown, wheel of tree encircling silence and springing slow rivers of blood, rivers that flow flat down the face and neck, silent as cattails under windless moons. My father, lamed and crowned, drunk stupid in his chair, bloody and still, he and I looked to each other. Exhaled smoke is caught in the moon's silent wake, a cartoon cobra weaving slow and silent, looking for its strike. In a shell of building across the street, rats scuffle over plaster. A train whistles near, and then is passed. He speaks, barely audible. We're not real. None of this is real. Go back to bed. Two, the crown passes. Yes, winter would come. November left us without a doubt of it. The October trees, stripped of dress and show, deceitful days that softly twirled around us, collecting in piles like leaves, drifts we thought endless. We loved the paper doll prettiness of autumn, the wind's soft bite, the ignorable stir of leaves and corners like grave diggers waiting their cue. And so when the call came, ringing patiently insistent as the morning frost, there was nothing to do but answer. The joint aching mornings in a land too far north for angels, the November ground barely tolerates burials. Yet that day we stood like a flock of crows in the brittle grass. Intonations were sung, and when they lowered my father, the wind carried nothing but bits of ice and rain. The October days were gone, days that made us believe in spite of ourselves, days when Indian summer breezes promised a warm respite. My father died with a false assurance, yet still I carried his shadow, a shade of wind in the sorrow of my blood, and was crowned for it, scalded in the narcotic suit of armor I welded each night, scorching fingers and lungs in a bid to seek safety in fog. He crept through windows, my father the wind, he curled himself in cushions of chairs and creases of books. Crowned, I was hobbled in shadow, and it left me tethered to one place and to one time. Three, Howl, 96 Remix. I saw the best minds of my generation become waiters, hysterical overcooked broccoli worries, and spill soup nightmares, who fucked in the shadows of the beats after buying on-the-road cliff notes at the mall, who gave head just once, didn't like it, all the bobbing too damn ridiculous, who bought only jazz to avoid pop star machinations, yet so all the time stoned he could only stare as the spider moved slowly down the wall who quietly wept over the track marks of an East Texas lesbian wanting to save her but not even able to save himself, who out of boredom mapped out the latest college town rounds of sperm and saliva on the back page of her student loan payment book and figured out she had fucked herself nine ways to Sunday, who spent the last of his dough on Scotch and Blake, then stayed up all night listening to Joy Division too drunk to read, 
who search for hours collecting pocket change, couch cushion change, car ashtray change, trying to come up with enough to cover a pack of cigarettes and the Ticketmaster's service charge, who finally quit trying to make sense of it all, wrote poems and paid the pipers and in hash and scotch dreams let desire peel away like paper from a wall, who watched his best friend pushing his chips to the center, all in, marriage and baby and a little job in Omaha, saying, do you seriously think we'll have any choice? A child of light is born of a virgin on the darkest night of the year. Already spring perches in the bows on the darkest night of the year. Who dictates that our terrible mirth be ever swathed in blood and birth? Terror joy, guardian of the palace of wisdom, his road of excess is littered with refugees. Terror joy, consort of Kali, destroyer of illusion. Terror joy, the great wheel turner, breaker of hope and despair. The millennium is nearly done, and still the sun rises. Terror joy, the cut worm forgives thee. I'm with you in Omaha, where the icy hills of your life are treacherous. I'm with you in Omaha, where your frustration and bliss mingle in the baby's cries which rouse you every night. I'm with you in Omaha, where you do the algebra of food and medicine. I'm with you in Omaha, where health insurance is low murder and car repair disastrous. I'm with you in Omaha, where the river runs too slow to cleanse itself. I'm with you in Omaha, where you bear the costs. I'm with you in Omaha, where the perfectly natural unmiracle of your baby is smiling and the block where you live has trees. I'm with you in Omaha, where you sleep in the arms of enough. 4. Release The blue singer was a fat, fat woman with arms outspread, fleshy and white, catching the simple lights on the simple stage, her voice carrying over the old wood and the bar brass and the half-empty bottles until we all seemed to swell full as the moon in the night stamp sway. And as the two women in front of us danced with the slow ease of teenage girls listening to 45s on a bubblegum afternoon, I watched you watching, your eyes catching the glitter of a song in a bar, your mouth seeming to sip the nectar from the air, and later, softly kissing in a parked car, the cigarette a forgotten stock of ash, the moon ever patient, your eyes promising me nothing at all. I suddenly understood, lay down the shadow, and a thousand doors opened everywhere at once. The moon in memory is always full, kingmaker, cloaked bull, silent witness indifferent as tide. Released, my father the wind rides westward, west over the vast plains of some god's women folly, west past the central vanity of the Rockies, west past deserts and tanglesome freeways and troublesome faults, riding to where sand and surf become Pacific, riding a horse of cigarette smoke into the warm white foam of the cool white shark, octopi, and feathery gods. My father the king, a tumbler full of scotch at a solitary hour, dead and most alive, bread bowl on a cold day, forgiving and most forgiven. My father the wind rides west at last, and I am crowned for it here, in this land and in this time. Here I will stay, happily to win a kingdom, and even so, happily to win nothing at all. <laughs>